Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how overcoming the free will illusion frees us from judgment and anger. Okay, um, before we do that, I just want to briefly go over the purpose of the show. Well, um, you know, this illusion of free will kind of, I believe, creates more harm than good. Um, so the idea is like, I, you know, I believe we can create a better world for ourselves, both personally and societally, by understanding the true nature of, of human will. Um, okay, and uh, these shows are online, you know, uh, at www.causalconsciousness.com. And if you Google Exploring Illusion of Free Will, you know, that's another very easy way to find the site. Okay, and we've got like 32 episodes up there so far. Um, okay, so before we get into this, I just want to briefly describe what we tend to mean when we um, have, say we have free will and why it's just like, you know, not possible. Okay, um, when we say we have free will, what we mean is that we are free to decide whatever we want, regardless of anything. You know, free, that's what the term free means, free of. So like, you know, we'd say free of our parents' influence, free of what we learned in school, free of um, what we read, you know, free of, free of anything. You know, that's what a free will is. And, and naturally, um, you know, that just by, you, you can understand that we're not free of all that. that all that com comes together to make us who we are and decides for us. And um, the other way to understand that um, our wills are not free is if you understand that Every time we make a decision, that decision is based on something. It has to be based on something, otherwise it would be arbitrary. So it's based on different reasons, different, let's say it could be memories, principles we've learned, um, our personality, whatever. And um, the thing about that is that basically all this stuff is stored in our unconscious. You know, if we're going to make any kind of decision, it doesn't matter what it is, that decision has to be based on something, on, on more than one thing, you know. And all these things, they, you know, they have to be in our unconscious because, you know, it would be impossible to be conscious of, of all the stuff that we're, you know, might take part in the decision. And again, and again, because like, think about it this way: if, if in order to make a decision about something, we have to kind of like consider our past experience, what we learn and all that stuff. And if all that stuff is in our unconscious, and if by definition we're not even aware that we have an unconscious, we're unconscious of it, you know, our conscious mind, that should tell you very clearly that, um, that our human will is unconscious rather than free. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so... How overcoming the free will illusion frees us from judgment and anger. Okay, we're compelled to make mistakes to to do get things wrong. That's kind of like, almost kind of like what being human is about. You know, we, we can't avoid this. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to get do things that we consider wrong and all. And um, you know, we are, we're we're very far from perfect. We just um, we make mistakes all the time. So here's, here's the problem. From a free will perspective, when we do things wrong or when others do things wrong, we will, um, we will ascribe free, you know, free will to, to ourselves and others and blame ourselves and others. We'll say, well, you know, this person did something wrong of their own free will, and because it was of their own free will, they deserve to be punished or... <coughs> or or I am right in aggressing toward them, at them, whatever. Um, <coughs> when, when you understand, when we understand that um, free will is a myth, that, um, that everything that happens is completely compelled, all of a sudden, you know, we, we can't, you know, if somebody does something wrong and they had to do it, we're not going to logically um, say, well, you know, We've got to punish this person. I mean, it, it gets a bit complicated because actually, you know, in terms of like some of our behavior, punishment can 
serve as a deterrent, you know, um, deterrent for others, you know, like if somebody does something wrong and they're punished, then others will have that punishment as their motivation to not do wrong. That's, um, that is true, but, but see, like when, when we, um, when we um, blame others, it, it's, it, it, it involves much more than, um, and sometimes the punishment isn't, isn't necessary. Um, yeah, sometimes, for example, like um, there are two kinds of ways to influence um, human behavior they found in psychology, like kind of like op um, operant conditioning, different kinds of conditioning. Um, and they've, they've done experiments well, where they kind of like use positive versus negative reinforcement to, um, to kind of control a subject's behavior in, um, in various experiments. And I think, if I, if I remember correctly, generally the positive reinforcements, positive motivations work better than punishments or threats of punishment. So, so naturally, again, when, when, when we have the free will perspective, we would think that punishment is justified apart from any kind of practical value it might have in deterring. Whereas when we understand that we have causal wills, when f that free will is an illusion, um, we, are, um, we don't blame the person. We, 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 we say no. I mean, we, we may have to, you know, let's say if a person's doing something very wrong that's hurting others, we may have to separate that person from others so that they don't do that. But, but the, the important thing here is that um, if we were to do that, it would be done without the anger, without the judgment. Again, you can't, <clears throat> you can't be angry at um, logically at someone if they were completely compelled to do what they did. I mean, it just wouldn't make sense. You might want to be angry at the causal past or the universe or God or something. But um, it simply wouldn't make sense to, uh, to be angry, you know, with someone um, for doing what they were absolutely compelled to do. Okay, and that's key. That's key because um, in terms of responding to when people do um, wrong, what we have now <coughs> is, um, it's very useful actually. Um, generally, we tend to deal with that with forgiveness. Um, Forgiveness is uh, certainly a, a religious concept. It's pr it may be a, a Greek philosophical concept also, I'm not sure. But the idea behind forgiveness is like, you know, everybody understands that, you know, as a human being, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. We're going to make mistakes all the time. And, sowing that, and knowing that, we kind of like, <clears throat> we kind of like see the wisdom of, of showing compassion toward each other when we make mistakes, of not, you know, of forgiving. You know, what, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is like, well, yes, the person did something wrong, but one, I know he couldn't help himself. I know he was doing the best he could. He's only human, whatever. Um, it's right to forgive. Okay, so, so the idea is what, when people do th something wrong from a theological standpoint, I guess given, you know, that there's a certain amount of contrition on their part, whatever, sometimes, um, sometimes not. Sometimes the, the forgiveness is kind of like unconditional. But that, that kind of forgiveness is, um, while it's founded in reason, just I think the, the fact that we're imperfect and are, and are going to make mistakes a lot, it's also founded, I think, on, on kind of like the, the idea of goodness. In other words, like, it's good to forgive. It's, you know, it's a right thing to do f to forgive. Um, and that works. But, but then you, like, consider that motive, f um, which would result in kind of, like, kinder, more compassionate behavior toward whomever one is forgiving. Compare that with the causal will perspective that sees free will as an illusion. Um, all of a sudden, it's not... A, um, an act of goodness to forgive. It's actually an act of reason. You know, um, good way to understand this is, um, let's say a two-year-old. <coughs> a two-year-old spills something. 
even though we tend to attribute free will to, to adults, we generally don't ascribe free will to two-year-olds. You know, we, they don't, you know, with their behavior, if they spill the milk, we, um, we're going to forgive them. You know, we're, we're, going to, um, we're going to understand that they couldn't but do what they did because of their limited development and li limited um, knowledge and limited abilities and all, you know, two years old. So, um, so, so with that, yeah, even with that, um, what happens is like when we move from the forgiveness model to the causal will model or to kind of like the, um, the model that, that doesn't attribute um, free will to people, then we can tr uh, treat ourselves and, and each other with... Um, <coughs> with more compassion from the standpoint of reason. Okay, that's the thing, you know. It just, all of a sudden, it would make no sense. I mean, like, if, if someone, let's say, compelled someone else to do something wrong, you know, and let's say, like, they took the person's hand and just, like, you know, did something with it that was wrong, you know, and that, that person um, had no power to, um, to prevent that, we we um we wouldn't blame the person whose hand is, was taken to do something wrong. We we wouldn't. We understand that very intuitively, very clearly. We would, I guess, in this case, we would blame the um the person doing it. Um, but um, hmm, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, I don't know. All right, we had a, we had an earthquake. <laughs> we, had, we had an earthquake here. I was like finishing up the last episode. I taped like three at a time, and all of a sudden, like the studio started to shake a little and stuff. I, I, I'm still thinking about that a little, um, so that kind of may be distracting me somewhat. But okay, um, so so the idea is like under the causal will perspective, blame becomes irrational or at least blame related to, um, to human beings. Um, and we would treat each other with the same kind of understanding that we treat a two-year-old, you know, who we don't ascribe free will to. But, so, I mean, who do we blame? What do we blame? You know, if we don't blame the person, well, um, we could blame the causal past or God or whatever. And um, if we want to, you know, like, because if there's a cause, then, you know, obviously the universe or God, um, the causal past, was causing um, whatever was wrong to happen, you know, compelled it. So, but then, you know, we're also left, I mean, that, that's, I think, an improvement because, like, to the extent that we move our, shift our blame from people to the universe or God, then at least our interaction, our relationship with the people in our lives and with ourselves, you know, because we don't want to blame ourselves either, um, is is more intact, is more um, is more pleasant. But um, <laughs> then, then there comes the um, the prospect. All right, so like we we can choose to blame the universe, but then there's a question. There's an open question regarding whether the universe or God is the free will. Um, if the universe is unfolding moment by moment by moment in a causal fashion, cause and effect, you know, the state of the universe at one moment completely causing the state of the universe at the next moment, which completely causes the state of the universe at the next moment, then it would seem kind of like irrational or logical to blame the universe for, for doing what it's compelled to do. Um, we might if we want to blame anything, we might <laughs> blame the um, the beginning, you know, which transcends reason. How could there have been a beginning? Because there must have been something before. So <laughs> the idea is, yeah, um, understanding causality makes it much harder, makes it impossible to um, to find reasons to blame, you know, to find um, good reasons. Anyway, all right. Um, now, okay, this is cool. What you know, I've been doing this show since um, November twenty seventh, two thousand and ten. That's when we first started taping. Um, 
And so it's you know, about 10 months now. And um, as I'm doing the show, I'm trying to actually integrate this knowledge of causal will into my life. In other words, like when people in my life do wrong, when I see people on TV doing wrong, whatever, um, I'm getting better and better at more quickly reminding myself, wait a minute, you know, I shouldn't be angry at, at them, at this person, at those people, because they don't have a free will. And, and let me tell you something, I, I'm beginning to use this like, again, I'm getting better at, at reaching that realization um, faster, and that prevents a lot of unnecessary um, anger and judgment that I would be feeling otherwise. I mean, like, yeah, once, you know, once I, like, you know, think of something that someone may have done wrong, and, and you know, initially, you know, my thoughts are like, you know, that's, you know, it's bad for this person to do that. Why is this person doing that? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a reaction directed to the person. It's about the person. But as soon, as soon as I um, remind myself that that person was completely compelled to do what they did, that they had absolutely no choice in the matter, then, um, then again, you know, it, 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 would make, it would make blaming that person completely irrational. There would be no reason to. Okay, um, so, so in terms of like, you know, I hope you've been watching um, various episodes episodes of this show and understand why free will is an illusion but you know the important part also to to um, take to consider is that um, is that you know you you have to, it would benefit you to um, to integrate this knowledge in other words the, the more episodes you watch the more you understand this um, the more you want to you might want to try to put it into effect in your life for example, let's say if you have kids and, and you're, um, and, and actually parents know this. This is something the parents know intuitively. They don't want to be angry at their kids. So like if their if they're um, child does something wrong, uh, a wise parent um, might, you know, sit down with the kid. Well, why do you think you did this wrong? What, what you know, to kind of like explore it with the kid, not to blame the kid, not to say, you know, you're evil, you're bad, you know, you did this of your own free will and you, need to deserve, you deserve to be punished and you deserve to be held accountable. This, you know, this causal will perspective, it's without anger. It's like, you know, all right, so like, you know, I mean, uh, what could a kid do? Um, I don't know, cheats on, a, on a, a test in school. Or why did you do that? Well, you know, I was afraid, like, you know, if I... Um, didn't do good on this, I might, you know, get a lower grade, and then you, you go over, to, well, what, why would that be so horrible and all that? It's just like the, the free will perspective, you know, you did wrong, you cheated, you're bad, you know. The causal will perspective is, hey, what's going on? Why did this happen? You know, how can we pre prevent this from happening again, hopefully? And um, so that's, um, that's important because... Um, because this, this question of human will isn't just academic, you know. It's not, it's not trivial. It's not for no reason. It, there's, you know, there's tremendous practical benefits that, that one can gain, the society can gain, that the world can gain as we shift from the free will perspective to the causal will perspective. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, we've got about eight minutes. Um, okay, I, I'm going to go into some more considerations. Um, okay, let's see. All right, here's another way to understand um, why free will is an illusion. I, I think we, we've covered this topic enough. Basically, uh, the idea is that, um, you know, to the extent that we understand um, that reality is causal, that human will is causal, that free will is an illusion, we're going to become less angry with others and, and our relationships should improve um, somewhat, you know, because of that. You know, we're going to, we're going to not judge um, others as much. But, um, all right, so let's, let's move on to something else. Um, okay. Let's see. 
Where I, I had I had a good one. Oh yeah. All right. In science, human behavior results from nature and nurture only. Okay. Think about it. I mean, like, you guys all went to school, to junior high school, to elementary school. You know, high school. You you took science courses. You understand human behavior, animal behavior, behavior of living things. It's determined by nature. Well, I don't know about all living things. Some some living things like small. No, yeah, it's probably all, you know, probably everything. Everything is either nature or everything is a combination of nature and nurture. Back, um, back decades ago, there used to be this debate in, in science um, whether human nature was, what human behavior was a result of genetics, you know, our heredity, uh, what we, um, the genes we got from our parents, or whether human behavior was a result of our environment, what we learn, our interaction, you know, what, um, what's going on in the real time and what we've learned in the past. Okay, and this was a, you know, this was a debate um, in science and psychology, I suppose, especially. And what they discovered through a lot of experimentation, it's not really contested in any way now, is that human behavior is both the result of nature and nurture. It's the genes and the experience combining to, um, to form our decisions, to, um, <coughs> to determine what we do, our behavior. But there's a thing. Nowhere, nowhere in that, in that consideration, in that question, is there um, either the, the prospect or the opportunity for a free will. You know, it's not, the question in science has never been whether human behavior is nature, nurture, or free will. You know, free will has never been a, a, a part of that because it's, it's, it's an incoherent concept, because it makes no sense scientifically. Free from what? What, what would the uh, will be free from? Um, <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, so like, if you go back to your science, um, now, a lot of science teachers will, will probably say, well, yeah, everything is a result of nature and nurture. Human behavior is a result of nature and nurture. But then if you ask them, if you press them on it, well, does that mean we don't have a free will? And a lot of them will say, well, no, we still have a free will. Okay, and this, you know, the, the reason I think many of them may do, may say that, there are a couple of reasons, and I, I'm kind of like guessing to a certain extent. One is that we're all raised in a Judeo-Christian um, society, or most of us, whatever, at least here in the United States and New York. Um, and so we're, we're conditioned. We're conditioned to believe in free will. If we, if we went to church, synagogue, whatever, you know, free will is a um, very fundamental religious belief. I mean, <laughs> free will is what, like, what allows us to, like, say some people are, should, you know, deserve to suffer in hell. <laughs> I mean, God. Um, so, so the idea is, like, and, and another, another reason why these, um, these high school teachers, college professors may not, especially with college, may not um, want to, you know, refute the, the doctrine of free will is because a lot, a lot of these colleges, I think, get funding, private funding. A lot of them are, you know, um, they want, you know, their kids, you know, the, 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 the parents who send their kids there and all to, um, to learn certain things. And, I, I, you know, I think to the extent that free will kind of like um, is the, the religious doctrine, that I think um, some professors who are also religious are going to tend to kind of like shy away from it to not offend, you know, the religion. Um, okay. All right. Our intelligence determines our choices. That's another good way to understand how we don't have free will. If, 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 we're, if we have a certain level of intelligence, we're talking IQ or emotional intelligence, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever kind of intelligence we, you want to um, think about. If we have a certain amount of that, um, our decisions are going to ba be based on that amount of, energy, of, of intelligence, that amount, that uh, intelligence can sometimes be defined as, you know, the ability to process information and kind of come up with a, um, a logical, rational conclusion or understanding. And um, 
And so, like, if you have somebody with, um, with different, a different level of intelligence than someone else, they're going to come up with um, a different answer, a different decision, many, many times. And the, the, the key thing here is that, like, with intelligence, we don't get to choose. It's like, you know, we can increase our intelligence by, for example, exercising our minds, but that, we can't do that in real time. In other words, like, if we practice some kinds of exercises over maybe uh, months or years, we, we might, you know, we can certainly increase our IQ, but, but it's not something we can do in real time. And so the idea is like the level of intelligence we have, the kind of intelligence we have at any given moment is really not up to us. Um, and also, even to the extent that we can control our intelligence through exercises, that, that would be a causal process. In other words, there would be reasons, there would be causes um, to that, you know, that kind of evolution from less to, to greater intelligence. And so that would, that would also ref, you know, refute free will. Okay. Um, all right, I think, I think we've covered enough for, for today. We've got about a minute left. So, um, yeah, I hope, um, hmm. let's see, how, how do I want to end this? Um, okay. Um, perfect example. I'm tired. I'm really tired. I've just been doing too much work recently. And, like, I'm trying to figure out a way to end this show, you know, in, in creative entertaining way educational and it's not coming to me and what's coming to me is like this is a perfect example of, of why of how I don't have a free will if I had a free will I would never be kind of like grasping for what to say next or how to say it and all it, it would all be completely up to me all right I hope you're, you've been understanding this and you know keep tuning in and as you tune in, you'll, you'll better understand the nature of human will, and that should help, help you to um, use this in your life and to help us create a better world. Thanks.